Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Food Heals Podcast, episode 162. I think Chinese medicine is a beautiful way to look at the body because it looks at this beautiful like elements of the body. You have metal and wood and fire. And then you also want to look at vitamin D levels and blood work. And then when you combine the two, I feel that is what makes this complete medicine. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Hills Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. And I'm Susie Hardy. Today we're speaking with Isabel Schumann, who is a licensed acupuncturist and also a good friend of Susie's. That's right. Isabel <laughs> is uh, has been... We've been friends for, gosh, I want to say 14 years. And we bonded over a shared philosophy of healing before mm. she even had to do. De- I knew her before she was given a diagnosis that really changed her life. Yeah. I really enjoyed learning from her. And Susie, then was it while you knew her that she got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis? Yeah. So we had been friends for a few years. She went to live in Manhattan uh, and, and was a restaurant manager and had gone to school for that and received a had some symptoms of Uh, like nerve issues that she had no idea what Mm -hmm. was going on so she went to doctors and they had a really hard time diagnosing her Mm -hmm. because she had these symptoms and they didn't know what box to put her and they finally diagnosed her with multiple sclerosis and this of course uh, changed the whole trajectory of her life she moved back to California where she was from and was given very few options she was told to get ready for a wheelchair Mm -hmm. and told you know these are the drug options you have and really didn't offer any hope, you know, they said, get ready for a wheelchair and you're gonna have a lot of side effects from these drugs and they're not really gonna help you that much anyway. And um, my friend Isabel's tough chick and she Mm -hmm. said, yeah, F that, I know enough about holistic medicine, working for an acupuncturist, receiving holistic treatments for many years, there's gotta be another way and that's exactly what she did. Good for her, I love that so much and obviously this is an issue very close to my heart because so my mom suffered from and she did end up in the chair and she did end up unable to walk and the doctors had no answer for her and I truly believe due to all the pharmaceutical drugs that she was taking plus the devastation of having a chronic debilitating disease is what brought on her cancer Mm -hmm. and so when people like Isabel are able to reverse it I'm just thrilled because I know that anyone can do this and you know obviously I regret that we didn't have this knowledge back then but I just think that we can heal our bodies. Our bodies are supposed to heal themselves, but we have to give them the tools that they need to. And that's exactly what Isabel is doing. So Isabel embarked on a long journey and delving into all the ways she could help her body. She did yoga, meditation, she took herbs and supplements and went on a whole foods diet. Along the way, she became a yoga instructor, owned a yoga studio and finally became a licensed acupuncturist to help heal others. That's right. I'm very proud to call her my friend. Next up, our interview with Isabel. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. Today we're here with 
Isabel Schumann, and when she was diagnosed with MS, she chose to view her diagnosis in a different light, managing her symptoms through holistic diet and being conscious of all the ways in which she could support and heal her body. Today, she's a licensed acupuncturist helping others heal through Chinese medicine. And Susie, she's a good friend of yours. You even lived with her when she first embarked on her healing path. That's right. I remember when she moved back from New York, we wound up being roommates. And, so cool. And uh, while we lived together, she was becoming, a, you know, getting her certification as a yoga instructor mm-hmm. and then setting up her yoga studio. And we've been good friends ever since. I've seen her learn to manage not only her symptoms, but more importantly, how she views being labeled with MS and, and her body and healing. And she's got a really beautiful take on it. Um, we met, I'm trying to do the math. Is it 15 years? No, it's less than 15, but more than 10. 14 yeah. years ago? Uh, 2003? 2004? 14, like 13 or 14 yeah. years ago in an acupuncture office where we both worked. And I remember when I saw her shoes, I thought, <laughs> that girl is cool. Because I was wearing every, heels. Huh? You were wearing heels. <laughs> you were working the reception and I was working, I was working as a massage therapist and very few people in the healing world wear pumps. <laughs> it's much different now. Now I have yoga shoes on. <laughs> yes. But that's what that's what got us to be friends at first. So welcome, Thank Isabel you. Schumann. Thank welcome. you. Thank you so much for having me. I could go on about you, but I'm going to let you do it. Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do? About 14 years ago, I was diagnosed with MS, and that started my journey with alternative medicine. Although actually, it started when I was in high school, and my dad took me to an acupuncturist, Patty. Patty. Because um, I had migraines, mm. I think stress headaches. So I went to her, she put some needles in me, and I no longer had migraines. I was like, wow, this is really cool. That's great. And I ended up working for her years and years later, and then moved to New York City, and that's where, I guess, the hustle and bustle of the city was a little much for me, and I was diagnosed with MS, and then I decided to move back and kind of take control of my life and decide, um, without taking any of the Western drugs, like how to proceed and how to heal and how to manage autoimmune issues. Can I ask how old you were when you were diagnosed? I was 27. So young. So young. Young. Early, mm-hmm. early, which is good, I yeah. guess, you know. Mm-hmm. And so from there, kind of just started the process of learning about food, mm-hmm. how food is medicine, meditation, yoga, which then led me to get licensed in yoga and um, buy a yoga studio, which I had for a few years. And then I sold it to go to acupuncture school. And now I'm an acupuncturist. And um, did you find that acupuncture helped your MS symptoms as well? A hundred percent. And everything that I have been through um, symptom-wise, I have seen in my practice. Wow. So even just to the point of a wrist injury, like um, when I was in school for like seven, eight months, I had, they call it de Quervain syndrome. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, where it's mother's thumb. They have to like hold their babies. And so it hurts like right at the wrist. And I was like, I'm going to have a patient that's going to have this problem. My first paying patient (laughs) had the exact same wrist problem. Wow. And she was a trainer and I healed her and she has sent me so many clients, so many patients. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. So it's interesting how you, like, you're, you just learn. This is a resounding theme today. <laughs> it keeps saying it. Like, the things that you go through, then you Yeah, right? so we recorded a couple of podcast episodes today, and it's just, like, about how our stories, our traumas, are how we're able to then help others heal. Hmm. And so, it, you know, it, it really breaks my heart anytime I meet someone with MS that is thriving as you are because my mother basically died Mm. um, from MS. And then, you know, because of, I believe, the complications of all of the drugs and all of the terrible things she was doing to her body, it turned into cancer. And so she passed away. But, you know, she had all the symptoms and the doctors just gave her painkillers. There was no talk of any of this alternative medicine. It wasn't even an option for us. Yeah, you know, I, for some reason, say by the grace of God, Mm -hmm. I chose a different path. I don't know what it was. 
I just remember sitting at the doctor's office in New York City and my mom was there and they were saying, okay, these are the drugs that are available. We don't know which one to give you, but it's a trial and error and these are the, the side effects. Right. And I remember like my mom's crying mm. and I was laughing and she looks at me and she goes, <laughs> you were laughing? Uh-huh. And she goes, why are you laughing? And I said, I'm not putting that shit in my body. <laughs> Good for you. I wasn't sick at the time. Like, I didn't Mm. feel... I was having weird symptoms, but I wasn't, like, feeling like, oh, I'm... My body is going down. I need something now. Right. Maybe if it was, things would have been different. You know, I was was 27, so I was young. Yeah. um, And I thought, well, there's got to be a different way. I mean, thank God you had that thought. And so what did you do? Um, I left New York Mm -hmm. because New York is not a good place to heal. It's not like a healing environment. It's a party environment. Um, And I was very, very fortunate that my family at the time had a condo in Laguna Beach. And um, that's actually when we really reconnected Mm -hmm. because you contacted me. Because I got mugged. Yes. Oh, my God. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. And you you reached out to me and I said, come stay with me in Laguna. So, yeah, we worked together and then you moved to New York and we like we hooked up a couple of times there because that's where I'm from. And then when I got your email that you're moving back, I was like, I can't believe you're so young. I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened. And then then I got mugged. I got held up at gunpoint and I was like, I need to get the fuck out of here. Oh, my God. I'm like, can I come hang out with you in Laguna? And you're like, yeah. And I went down there and you were already on your, like, changing what you were eating and, yeah. Yeah, that's actually, right when I came back to L.A., I moved to Laguna for four months. My family was very lovely and said, just figure yourself out. And I wish that upon everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually have a patient right now that was just diagnosed with Hashimoto's. And she's very young and she is trying to figure out the right uh, thyroid medications and they keep changing them and she has all sorts of symptoms and she also has the fortune of taking her family says take a couple months and try to figure your health out before you just forge into a career because mm-hmm. um, it's very stressful out there living in this world so I was and that's half the but the battle and what causes these diseases half the time a hundred percent So I just, I was in Laguna Beach. I read all these books like Food is Medicine. I was seeing Anne Baroque at the Mm -hmm. time. Former podcast guest. Yeah, she was amazing. She taught me a lot about uh, what to look for on labels of foods and supplements. That's kind of where she started me on supplements. And um, mantra. She gave me mantras And I was like, mantra. (laughs) What the heck is that? Yeah. Uh It's like coming, you know, living from New York. (laughs) (laughs) New Yorkers and mantras. (laughs) Right? (laughs) And it was was the mantra that that was like, my nervous system is balanced. And Mm -hmm. it was so... And then I started to research more stuff like that. And instead of saying, like, I have MS, I always say I was diagnosed because it has some other sort of like energetic connection to you. Yeah. True. That it doesn't own you if you if you have it, it owns you. So. I love that. And you know, in terms of like when we talk about mantras and affirmations, we are telling ourselves every day who we are, what we are, what we have. And so if we're telling ourselves, "Oh my god, I have MS. I have cancer. I am tired. I have chronic fatigue. I am stressed." Then your cells go, "Okay, We're going to create those conditions. For sure. And it sounds like a lot of woohoo BS, but we have found that to be true over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And it's science, people. It is. Yeah. There's a lot of science behind that. Uh Uh-huh. About just what you tell yourself every day. And so that's, that was really my journey. I remember being in Laguna Beach for two months and being really strict on, I did a candida cleanse, Mm -hmm. which, you know, whenever you go on these cleanses and like you know try to really heal your body it's cycles of she lived with me when I was really trying to be very strict and you go through cycles of being really strict and then going on a date with a guy and drinking a bunch of coca-cola where you throw up do you remember that when I was like no I do remember (laughs) your like your sugar crazes like sugar yeah like you go through ups and downs and it took me probably like 10 years to where I finally feel like I'm 
I'm pretty balanced. Mm-hmm. I won't go and have like four, you know, I won't go months without sugar and then have like five cupcakes. <laughs> yeah. I finally don't do that anymore. Maybe like one or two cookies, you know, <laughs> it's a little bit of a balance, but, and that's, that's kind of what brought me here and, and, uh, more interested in health and food and helping others. I kind of felt like I was put here and I chose this path to help others. So before we get to um, talking about acupuncture specifically, let's talk about Kundalini Yoga. Oh. Because you also introduced me to Kundalini Yoga. Yes. That's what you got trained in as a teacher, right? Teacher training? I took Hatha Kundalini and um, like restorative yoga. Um, Kundalini, yeah. It's hardcore. It is. Super (laughs) hardcore. Ain't no joke. You do it? Not as often as I should because they moved my studio to Santa Monica and I can't get there. But I was a Golden Bridge girl. They closed. The Santa Monica one Mm -hmm. did? Wow. I'm so depressed. So I was going to Golden Bridge when it was in East Hollywood. It moved twice. It, well, it moved from one part to the next part. Not even East Hollywood, like Central Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And I used to live right there. And I was a junkie. Mm-hmm. And then it moved to Santa Monica. And I didn't, I, I'm sorry, I can't drive there when I live in West Hollywood every day. It's just not going to happen. So I haven't been doing it. And I swear I was in much better health when I was doing it. My favorite teacher's here in West Hollywood. Ooh. I come all the way to West Hollywood. Okay, tell me more. Tage, she used to work at... Oh, I know Tage. Yeah, okay. she's up here. I'll give Tage a plug. Um, on Sunset and... It's called Nine Treasures Yoga. It's Sunset and Crescent Heights. I'm Googling it right now as we speak. Yeah. She's there 9 a.m. every single day. Monday through go, seven Allie. days a week. <laughs> Y'all know, I, I'm, at 9 a.m. I am on conference calls. I hope she has a different time. She has I'll other times. Up. Okay, but cool. <laughs> it is seven days a week, though, so you can, on Sunday even, go at 9 a.m. Oh, that's good. Okay, I can do a weekend. I love it. Okay, well, thank you for that resource. Yeah. So how did Kundalini help with your MS? Like, tell us how it's really helped change your, your life. Is Does one equal the other help me with MS? I I would probably say yes in that I have had many when I took teacher training or I've gone to um, like summer solstice or just been in classes of hers where I've been feeling symptom E. um, And for me, the symptoms that I have that I have had over the years is like tingling, some numbness Mm -hmm. on one side of my body. Um, My eye, one of my eyes gets a little blurry And um, when I'm in that and I go to class, I have been able to like separate the what's going on with me physically and then from what's going on with me emotionally. That's I mean, that's huge. Yeah. First of all. But I can't it's not easy to get there. Mm -hmm. And you need for me, I need guidance with Mm -hmm. that. And Mm -hmm. Tage has been my, you know, my teacher for I don't even know 13 years I go to her privately for therapy wow <laughs> and, and I do see she has a 6 30 p.m class I can take that there you go on Tuesday <laughs> all right but you go to her for therapy too that's cool well, uh guidance really she's a really good um like life coaching mm-hmm. she has helped me a lot manifest things we love manifestation. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't? So um, what are some things that you've manifested? She helped me manifest my boyfriend. Hell yeah. <laughs> Get the love going on. She did. It was really, I had just kind of ended a relationship and I was feeling really ugly. I wasn't feeling like good about myself at yeah. the time. And I went there and she, I said, Tage, I need to get out of my funk. Mm-hmm. And so she had me first... I wasn't allowed to leave the house unless I felt pretty. And, you know, they don't wear makeup or shave. So she's like, do your hair, do your makeup. You know, she's real. Or keeps wear anything real. but white. Yeah. And yeah. they wear the, the turban. The yeah. Tur- yeah. And so she was like, make sure you, you just look good and you feel good when you walk out of the house. It's like, okay. And then she told me to go to India Sweets and Spices and buy pictures of goddesses, which I still have up in my office at home. Oh, and, and she goes, just watch them and just feel the energy and read about the goddesses you bought. And I said, okay. So I did that. And then the next, the next phase of it, <laughs> when I went to her like two months later for a little more counseling, she had me write down on a piece of paper what I wanted to manifest in a man. 
she had me get really specific and she said, you know, the universe has a way of being funny. <laughs> Susie knows that. <laughs> and so I wrote down everything that I wanted in a man. And she said, read it every single morning when you meditate and fold it up and put it in a book that you hold to high vibration for yourself. And it was Power Versus Force, mm-hmm. which was the book that really catapulted me into like not taking the Western drugs. And so every day... I opened this piece of paper and I would cross it out and I would add stuff and I would change stuff. I got the height, all this stuff. Did you just say I got the height? I put height on there. I put (laughs) 6'3". I've never dated any. Ray is 6'3". I've never dated anybody over six feet uh-huh. in my life. And How I put, did you come upon 6'3"? I'm meditating. I was like, 6'3"? Like, that's, right okay. that's it. <laughs> I don't know. I still have the piece of paper. I believe it. And so I folded it up and I kept putting in the book. And every morning I'd meditate, imagine his energy next to me. And then I kind of, after 40 days, I had to do it, you know, kundalini yoga is all 40 days to manifest. After 40 days, I was kind of done. I was over it, going on lots of Tinder dates. And and I met Ray and we started hanging out and started dating. And a couple months into the relationship, I was like, that piece of paper, I pulled it out. 85% of the stuff I wrote down is him. Oh my God, that's amazing. I did the same thing for Mike. And I would say 8.5 out of 10 things, because I, w- I was doing it a different way. I, was, I just wrote 10 things, like 10 qualities. And I would say, yeah, eight, 85%, exactly 85%. Wow, yeah. yeah. It's real manifestation. Yeah. It is. And it's how much also do you believe in it? So you can put something in writing and put it out there. But if you're doubting it, and like we were talking about earlier, telling yourself every day, this ain't real, then you're going to wonder, why aren't I manifesting this? Manifestation must not be real. Therefore, I'm not going to do it anymore. And that's the problem. And that's why people don't believe in it. But it's working whether you believe in it or not. That's what the law of attraction is. So why not vibe with it? Choose what we want. Stop worrying, stressing. And I'm talking to myself too, please. So don't think I'm lecturing because I'm talking about myself. Stop doing all these negative things and just focus on the positive, what we want to attract, what we want to create, what is going to better ourselves, what's going to better the world. Totally. I agree. I just want to go back for a second to the MS. Mm -hmm. Did you get to a place where you are managing the symptoms or you feel you have reversed and healed it? Like, where are you now? So... Through this journey and studying acupuncture, I also am really, really passionate about functional medicine. And so what that is, in my language, in my eyes, is like you take... All three of them? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Is you take an alternative type medicine, like Chinese medicine, and you mix it with the lab work of uh, Western. Yeah. Like you use the tools that doctors... Western doctors have so that you can see urine samples, blood work, mm-hmm. um, stool analysis, my Yay! favorite thing. Yay! <laughs> Poop! I've I done it. it. <laughs> you have to mail it out in a little oh, yeah. container. <laughs> it's not fun. Um, and one of my patients mailed it and it never got to there. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> where did it go? Where did it where did her poop go? And you have to do it multiple days in a yeah, row. It's not totally. just one time. <laughs> and so you use all that um, to come up with a diagnosis and then a treatment plan. And so in that I went in and took a seminar by a man named Datis Karazian. He is an amazing functional medicine practitioner. I have been trying to actually be his patient, <laughs> but it's really hard to be his patient. And I've stalked him <laughs> because he, so if, I don't know if you're familiar with Apex products. Um, it's, a, it's a brand of supplements. Um, it's, they call, they're called like K22, and it's because K is his, Karazian is his last name. So I've taken a bunch of seminars by him on like blood functioning, blood work, and blood chemistry, and brain chemistry, and endocrinology. And um, he said in one of his seminars, and it shifted my whole perspective of things, um, and it made me feel better in some odd way. He said, with autoimmune disease, you will never heal. You will go through years and years and years of feeling great. Mm -hmm. And then out of nowhere, no one knows why, could be stress, could be food, could be... You activate it somehow? Somehow it's activated and it happens because it's in your body and it never... it's It's autoimmune is not curable. 
And but if you are at peace mm -hmm. with the fact that it's just it's going to be up and down cycles, then when it happens, you're not thrown off. You're not shaken to the core. You're like, okay, so what I am a big advocate for my patients is when you do have autoimmune issues to have a protocol in place for yourself. I have a protocol. So if I feel weird symptom -y, mm -hmm. and I can tell because I'm so yeah. healthy and I'm in tune with my body that I'm like, oh, I'm about something's happening in my body. I go to, I have a, an osteopathic doctor I go to and I get a bunch of injections. I get glutathione, I get phosphatidylcholine, I'll get like a Myers cocktail sometimes. But she, so I went to her when I started to go to her as a doctor and I said, we have to have a protocol in place. Mm -hmm. And like two months ago, I felt like my legs started to have this burning sensation. Mm -hmm. And I can tell like, it's not just like, oh, sciatica, because my skin feels burned, which is neurological. And I hadn't been doing anything. Maybe I was a little stressed out. I don't know. I hadn't eaten all the sugar. I wasn't, I don't drink. And so I was like, okay, this is just a dip. And I called up, I went, and when that happens, I go in, I get the injections. Three days later, I get another injections. Three days later, I get another injections. And it was gone. Wow. Have a plan. Instead of being like, I feel good, I feel good, I'm just going to go about my life. And then all of a sudden, with autoimmune, it just comes out of nowhere. And you get kind of like freaked out. Yeah. And you're, you're just, oh, I got to lay in bed. And then you don't know what to do. Have a plan. And that's kind of how I look at it now. I have a plan if something happens to me, if I feel something, and we'll see, and we'll go from there. I love that. So it's like the disease can be dormant for a long period of time, and then you somehow it's activated, and then you have a plan to make it go away as soon as possible. Yes. And it's a healthy plan. It's not a pop a pill to temporary suppress, temporarily suppress the symptoms plan. It is go to the root cause, treat it, and then live, go back to thriving. I mean, the root cause for any autoimmune disease is inflammation. Mm-hmm. And it's just, where's the inflammation targeting mm -hmm. in your body? For me, it's my, um, my nerves okay. and in, in a certain place. You know when you like, I always tell patients this, you get, you like bruise yourself and you always seem to bump the same the area same spot. that totally you have to that. bruise. That's the same thing with inflammation. So wherever you have, wherever your weakness is in your body, whenever it's activated, I like that word, um, that's where it goes. Mm -hmm. It's like it goes to the weak spot. Got it. And it sounds like it's helpful to also have a few different types of practitioners, like a like like an osteopath, an acupuncturist, a functional medicine doctor, like a team. Totally. I have a team. Yeah. I have an acupuncturist that I go to because I, you know, needling yourself is like giving yourself a foot rub. I, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like, okay, it's, a, it's good, but it's not the same, you know. When someone put in, would you be afraid to put needles in your I, I'm afraid to even talk about it. I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> no. Are you? Yeah. So I totally asked uh, Isabel to bring some needles because we're going to put some needles into Allison. Why me? Why because not you? I, I'm happy to do it. She's not, she's done it. it. She's, she's right. done it to me before. She'll I, do it again. <laughs> I go to acupuncture. It's no big deal. But it's like going to the dentist where they hit one spot and you're like, ow, my you know, like I, I, I am anticipating that one that hurts the whole time when 50 needles don't hurt. There's the one that hurts and I'm a little baby going, oh, my God, it's going to be this one. Well, it was going to be innocuous. We we're going to do I was I was thinking because we're in that we're in L.A. And I think yeah. this would be a good thing to just at least talk about is the acupuncture facelift. So it's just going to be your face. There's a place on La Cienega that does it. And I've been to two sessions and um, she is awesome and she treats my face but then she also treats my shoulders and my back and my legs and she's like this is because I can see that you're suffering from x and I'm like am I go for it like and it's all in one session it's amazing wow so the acupuncture facelift you said works but you do need a series of yeah of treatment it's not botox right unfortunately <laughs> you know. it's not as fast as botox <laughs> but it's not a neurotoxin so we're good well it's it's really just the needles um bringing blood flow to the face and the needles help to stimulate collagen production and so like supplements or like chinese herbs um you know patient compliance with chinese herbs is so fun um you have to kind of like 
bully patients a little bit because they don't <laughs> take them. They're kind of gross sometimes. And I'm saying kind of being nice. <laughs> so, but before, in a pill form. No, in a pill form, they're fine. But my experience, so like when Patty gave me, uh, I was having some digestive issues when we were working for her. And she sent me home with a bunch of Chinese herbs that I had to stew into a tea. Mm, yeah. And then drink over the course of like a week, like a few glasses a week. I'm sorry, every day for a week. And I really did try. And they were, and I've, t- I've grown up with taking healthy stuff, knowing that it tastes gross and you sometimes have to do it. Mm-hmm. Um. I put it over ice, like I, I try, like every, hold my nose and chug it. Like they were, they were not fun. Most Chinese herbs are super bitter. Yeah, and, and so why is that? Why are bitter herbs healthful? Well, in uh, American culture, we don't like bitter. If you go to like Thailand, they eat bitter melon, mm-hmm. like it's you know carrots, right? <laughs> carrots. right? And it, we here in America, we're all about sweet, Mm -hmm. the sweet life, you know, chocolate, uh, cereal in the morning, every, you know, desserts. And so those are very heavy on the stomach and cause a lot of stomach problems, um, along with, you know, gluten and dairy and all the, the trifecta, sugar, gluten, dairy. Mm -hmm. But, um, bitter is something we don't eat a lot of. And so Chinese herbs are there to kind of bitter drains damp. Mm. So we learn in school. And so when people have, they're overweight, they have um, abdominal problems, just like digestive issues, it's all because they're eating either too much fried foods or too much sweet. And so they need to drain the damp out of their, you know, if you get, if you're heavy headed, you feel heavy in the body, foggy brained, which I think a lot of people yeah. come in and they're like, oh, my brain is so foggy. You know, I, I can't think. It's because of the food. Mm-hmm. And bitter, 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 bitter drains it. And it tastes not good, but in a pill form, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so do we, ha- we have to go to an acupuncture to be prescribed kind of what herbs we need for our body based on how the needles go in and what you see? Symptoms. The first appointment, you know, I spend like 45 minutes to an hour just asking questions, getting to know you mm-hmm. and your history, because I think history is has a lot to do with, yeah. you know, it's a puzzle you got to put together as an acupuncturist to kind of figure out where to go, yeah. like what's the avenue to go. And in school, you learn, you know, lists of symptoms, they equal a certain diagnosis. You know, it's not ever just, oh it's one diagnosis, it's multiple, you know, that's like, here's some traditional Chinese medicine speak for you, but it's like um, spleen chi deficiency with damp, and maybe there's heat involved, you know, and those are all things like spleen chi deficiency, you're tired, Um, so fatigued a lot, maybe you have some like sleeping issues, um, depending on what those are, and there's, there's like different organs that are involved, if there's cold, you have loose stools. If it's heat, you might have um, constipation. If you, it's really smelly poop, <laughs> there's like damp heat. So it's like anything, we have to go, and then based on that, then we decide what points and herbs to give. And is it complementary to a functional medicine diagnosis? How do those work together? So the woman, I worked for an amazing functional medicine doctor the whole time that I was in acupuncture school, Mm -hmm. and I learned so much from her. And she had this beautiful way of combining it. And so if somebody came in with osteoporosis, it's a Western thing, right? But in Chinese medicine, that's bone And so it could be kidney related for us, not Western kidneys. We're talking Chinese medicine kidneys. Wait, hold up. You're saying they have less osteoporosis in the East, in Asia? No, no, no. I'm saying... The diagnosis. The diagnosis. So someone comes in and they're having kind of like brittle bones or like women going into menopause lose estrogen. And so that's all Western, right? So in Chinese medicine, we have to think kidney related. So with that... You can give somebody a really great kidney tonic as well as glucosamine, vitamin D, Mm -hmm. you know, and so the combination. And then you can talk about foods, foods that build, you know, leafy greens, stuff like that. 
and then you combine them. And I think that's what makes a complete medicine to me. I think Chinese medicine is, an, is a beautiful way to look at the body because it looks at this beautiful like elements of the body. You have metal and wood and fire. And then you also want to look at vitamin D levels and blood work. And then when you combine the two, I feel that is what makes this complete medicine. For some reason, too, patients, when I say, okay, here's vitamin D, they take it every day. But if I give them something, I have a patient who is Western diagnosed as arthritis of the spine. So he has back pain a lot. I give him vitamin D because his D levels were really low, vitamin B, and then a Chinese herb formula. Mm -hmm. He... I, he ha he's had the Chinese herbs for like three months and he hasn't finished the bottle, but the other bottles are done, <laughs> you know? So it's kind of funny to me. It is funny. And I'm actually guilty of that. I'll tell you why. Because um, the last time I got my functional medicine results and I got an unsustainable amount of vitamins. And so at first I was taking them every day and then I was like, this is not possible. And so then I just pick and choose each day, which ones am I going to fit in? And they're usually the ones that I think have the most potency, whether I'm right or wrong. So there's some that get to the wayside. And if I only had three, I would take them all. But I've got like 18 at this point. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to manage this. And so I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm at a loss where I'm like, I'm going to do my best, but I cannot take all of these every day. I said, this is a, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And she said, just do it until they run out and then we'll test you again. But I haven't even gotten to the point of them running out because <laughs> I can't take them all in one day. So I'm being a bad patient, I know, but I promise I'm doing my best. But I can relate to what your patient is doing. I always kind of tell my the story of my mom mm -hmm. to my patients. She does not like to take pills. And she has, it's called petechia. It's like when you hit your arm and you all, like have a, like the blood comes to the surface. So you have like blood spots, mm. if you've ever seen it. Mm -hmm. And it, it was getting pretty bad. She's about to turn 70. And she was like, I just look like I'm bruised everywhere. And so I was like, okay. And so I looked up a, a bunch of stuff. I gave her some herbs and I also gave her some dietary changes and some supplements. And, um... She was taking them for a month, and I said, do you notice anything? And she said, no. I said, okay, keep taking them. Took them for two months. Mm -hmm. I said, so how's the, how's the spots? She goes, I don't have them. They're, like, almost gone. And I, she's like, it's working. And that I always tell patients that it took two months mm -hmm. to, to do something to actually feel right. to, or to a see. Difference. Yeah. To, to see a difference and now she uh, has her own account on my <laughs> on my thing and she I see her ordering them all the time oh that's awesome yeah so lesson is I need to take my 18 supplements for at least two months <laughs> <laughs> well maybe you don't need to be on that many that sounds like a lot um, I might be exaggerating when I say okay. 18. That's the number that came to mind, but it is a lot. It's, it's not pretty. I'll show you after. I take a lot, so I, I totally understand. Yeah, I mean, I think my problem is because at this time I'm not actually suffering for, from something debilitating. I don't have as much motivation. Now, if someone diagnosed me with something severe, such as autoimmune, such as cancer, which I'm terrified of because my parents had all of the above, then I would be a crazy person and I would focus solely on, you know, making sure I took every single supplement. But right now, I'm just not feeling severe enough to do that. So it's on me. You have to do what feels right to you, you know. I always tell patients that. And I actually think it is good to do that. For yourself and test your body out like that some people they take them and they don't they're like well i don't notice anything i don't know if i'm feeling good or know if it's helping and i would say well are you feeling worse no and i said well then it's probably doing something but if you want to go off of them and test it go for it and typically they'll go off of them and be like okay yeah 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 you know that makes sense yeah so it's it's okay to do that it's okay to test your body i have this patient with um psoriasis and it's a new patient and she comes in i was like okay tell me about your diet oh it's terrible mm -hmm. and and i said okay she goes you, you're just gonna have magic needles to put in me and i said <laughs> i wish because then i'd be like super wealthy <laughs> If they were just magic. And um, so I gave her a sheet of paper 
of like, okay, you know, these are foods you want to stay away from and these are foods that you should lean towards. And she kind of rolled her eyes at me when she left and I was like, okay, she's not going to follow. She comes back two weeks later and I was surprised to hear, she goes, okay, I did it, is what she said. And so I decided that I was going to start on Monday. I saw you on Friday, I was going to start on Monday. So she went and had like this crazy packed Saturday of all her the foods that she loves just like an overdose of foods and she said her head and her lips were on fire she's never felt that before wow. and I was like well wow, it's actually really good that you did that because now you're aware and so then she she went on a super strict diet for like a, a week and then Cinco de Mayo came and she went and had margaritas and a bunch of Mexican food and again fire she mm. said she was on fire and so now she knows. She wasn't connecting food yeah. with her her symptoms. And now it's a connection. And so I said, when you're not eat, when you're eating healthy, do you notice that it's better? And she's like, I don't know. And I said, Well, is it itchy? And she goes, No. And I said, Is it usually itchy? And she's like, Yes. And I said, Well, and you know, patients have a hard time piecing things together. You kind of have to show them like you're not itching. It's working. Well, I mean, all our life's lessons come from our personal experiences. So someone can knock you over the head with a fact, but you're not, you may not be able to openly receive it and accept it as truth until you actually experience it. Also, people don't want to necessarily make those changes, sure. right? I mean, even you experience that. Most people don't. It's hard. They want to pill. It is hard. That, they, that's it what is. we've been taught. Yeah. And that's what we have to get over ourselves and learn, like, our health is in our hands. And it's very interesting to, to, to sit there and kind of watch people go through this reaction of, oh my God, I, I have to let go of food. And there's like some very um, psychological, psychological addiction yeah. mm-hmm. to, to our food here in America. I don't know how it is around the world. I do know I was in France like a year and a half ago and I don't know. I ate cheese and gluten plentiful and sugar mm-hmm. i have any symptoms so i don't know what they put in their before. food because it's a di- well i can at least speak for the gluten it's a different grain mm-hmm. they have different grains they have the grains that our ancestors grew up with and are you know many if you're from europe your family had years and years and years ago mm-hmm. um, versus the stuff that we have in the states is genetically modified that starts from a point of just crossbreeding different plant like the wheat plant was after the dust bowl was was genetically modified so that that wouldn't happen again so so it's great so people wouldn't starve but then they changed it into something our body wouldn't recognize and creates inflammation and plus the glyphosate that they spray yes that's a fun one that's in roundup right that's mm-hmm. what's in roundup made by yeah. monsanto yeah <gasps> oh, I know. but you know <laughs> i hate monsanto right i try not to get personally too obsessed because that's a whole other mental thing. Exactly. That... If we stress out about this, then that's going to cause our own disease before Monsanto will, right? Totally. And so you can't be too rigid, but then I just think to be aware is good. To have awareness of like, okay, you know, when there's an option for organic shop at farmer's markets, you know, just make smarter choices than being totally obsessed. And I've been to that obsessive place. And so I've tried really hard to come back from it because once I learned the truth, I was obsessed with it because I couldn't believe we had been lied to and no one was talking about this. And that was, you know, over 10 years ago now, but now people are talking about it. And so at least there is a growing awareness and it's going to turn into a revolution. I feel like we're at the beginning stages of the revolution of the food revolution and so we're only hopefully going to go in the right direction from here and there are these gorilla gardens popping up in neighborhoods that aren't sprayed um, with toxic pesticides and all that stuff so we're going in the good direction but we still absolutely have to be aware yeah so what are some tips that you give your patients besides like their direct um, maybe prescription for health, but what are some tips you can give in general for people to really thrive and feel their best? It all starts with the mind. Food is obviously one of them. And if they can 
hone in on some some dietary changes that'll shift things mentally for them but meditation and whatever that means to you um because when sometimes when I say meditation they're like people like I can't sit still Mm -hmm. and I say that's fine my boyfriend can run like he'll just go running five six miles and that's his that's meditation, his meditation. Uh-huh. because he it's quiet yeah him. he gets to a point where his mind blanks out of all yeah. of his like stress of work and stuff like that so if it's running if it's go glaze a bowl i don't know you know i don't care go do what now glaze a bowl pottery glaze a bowl pottery pottery i'm sorry <laughs> what is this some like southern thing what the hell is no she's from la <laughs> you're the <laughs> color me mine you know i don't know that a bowl okay a bowl like I thought a pottery. she said a bowl oh a bowl <laughs> glaze a bowl i was like is that like some cow tipping shit what are we talking about for sure if that, go tip a cat. Go no, tip. Don't, no, don't yeah, tip a that's cat. Mean. Sorry, yeah, that's I mean. missed that. Okay, okay. glaze a bowl. Glaze a bowl. I did think, I did think you said blaze a bowl, but that's just like... <laughs> I had a patient that said, did you just tell me to blaze a bowl? And I said, no, glaze a bowl. Glaze, go there draw, are paint. There so many ways this could go. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> so whatever, whatever helps you to quiet your mind, I think that is one of the most important things. Our mind and negative thinking can really spiral us down really fast. I've experienced it and still do, even though I meditate every day. I do head, that Headspace app. Yeah, we do that too. You do that. You do Headspace. My, my hubby and I do. Yeah. I tried it, and it, it it's too basic for you, Susie. You're too advanced. I'm too advanced. <laughs> you are. I'm just being no, honest. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't love it. But maybe I had to. No, it's because you're too advanced. Because the ones that I listen to are more advanced. But I like doing it with him because I feel like together. I don't know. We're like meditating together, and like helps our love or something. I, it is. It's a great app. I like it. Because it, it holds you accountable. Yeah. I think that's a big deal. And that's another thing that I is another tip. A lot of people come in and they want to lose weight. And they struggle with, with that because food addiction is so big. Yeah. And being held accountable. So like making a chart that's like, okay, no sugar, no dairy, no gluten, whatever, you're, whatever it is that you want to give up for a week. Okay, let's I'm going to give up dairy for a week. Mm-hmm. I find too that if you overwhelm a patient and be like you need to give up this, 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 yeah. they they're yeah. like no. Yeah. <laughs> they're like I can't do that. But if I say, you know, let's just let's have an experiment on the body. Let's just experiment and give up dairy for a week. 10 days would be better, mm-hmm. but because you're going to come back in a week to see me, then why don't we try a week? And that, and then I'm holding them accountable. Right. If not, you know, I have them like make a chart and you put like day one, day two, two, three, four, whatever, and you can put a little X mark. Yeah. Because there's something about getting past a one week when you get like, I don't know, I experienced it with even Headspace. Like I started and I would be like, I'd go two days in a row and then I'd miss a day. Mm-hmm. And then I'd be like, okay, another three days in a row, I'd miss a day. I'm on day like, I don't know, 59 right now. And I'm so... It's awesome. Right. So, but it's so like, I can't miss a day because I'm 59 days. Yeah. And so there's can't some... break that. Right. And so there's something about that. Even with food, if you're like, oh, I just went 10 days without sugar, I'm going to try 11. Yeah. And it's the same thing with meditation. Like, the same thing with anything you do if it's exercise. So if you, like, chart it somehow, hold yourself accountable. Those are little tips I I like to give patients. But I think, you know, beyond food, beyond acupuncture beyond and supplements, herbs, it's all mindset. I agree. And I think it does start with the mind and just making that commitment. And I love making charts. I will make myself a spreadsheet, print it out. And I'm like, these are the things I'm going to do. And making that X is so satisfying. Right? It is. You did it. And if I'm missing an X, I'm like stressing out. I'm like, oh my God, I have to double up so I can just like, you know, it'll counteract that X. It's over time, you know, you see what I've seen with myself because I'm my own kind of patient experiment (laughs) I guess I'm I'm my own experiment is that I've noticed that for myself if I made a chart that's like okay dealing with autoimmune I'm really you know sugar dairy gluten 
And the thing that Patty Lee, where we first met, that she taught me is if you do fall off the wagon, you can't beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. The beating yourself up is actually worse than the food itself. Right. So it's all um, it's, it's so all a mindset. True. That's such a good point because people beat themselves up and then they quit and they go, well, now I just can't do it. Yeah. Right. right. But you have to honor yourself and go, I ate a cupcake. I enjoyed it. It was really good. Back to plan, you know, tomorrow. And that's okay. Well, there's a book. I think it's called Why French Women Are Sk- Why French Women Don't Get Fat. Yes. Yeah. That- and why don't they get fat? Because they eat high quality. Mm-hmm. They eat small portions. Mm. They eat with friends and family, and they eat over long periods of time. Mm. They take a two-hour lunch. Um, mindfully. Mindfully, yeah. slowly, enjoying it. Yep. They have their wine. They have whatever they're having. They enjoy it. If they're having, ch- they'll have cheese as a whole course, but they'll enjoy it. And they also won't eat a ton of it, and they'll eat smaller pieces of it. Mm. And then they'll also... They look at themselves and they look at body images differently. I mean, obviously, women have body issues across the globe Mm -hmm. uh, because we're prized for, you know, how we look as opposed to what we can do or what we can think or what we can create or who we are. are. Um, But they look at, from that book, they look at their bodies differently. So they don't own scales. What they do is if they've been eating a little too much, they haven't gone for their walks, they, they don't exercise like crazy. They, they use it by measuring the way that their, their, clo- their favorite clothes fit them. So if they're starting to feel like their favorite clothes are getting a little tight, then they'll maybe cut back. But they don't, they don't freak out about it and mm-hmm. they do not obsess over scale. I, that was one thing that was huge mm-hmm. because my husband just bought a scale and I was like, I won't step on that fucking thing. <laughs> because, I, because I know that you, your weight can fluctuate for a few pounds oh, throughout just from the day. morning through night. Yeah. If, how much, if you've pooped, we keep yeah. talking about poop, or if you drink, drink your water or yeah. you've you know, just eaten a meal or whatever. Um, and then just talk about women's cycles. Like your weight can fluctuate a little bit. So I do not even want to deal with that. But that book was great. It is. I think that's the the best book I've ever read about dieting. And I wonder if, I may be wrong, but do they walk much more than we do? They do. We live these sedentary lifestyles. The reason people have to go to these intense CrossFit and like all these crazy classes is because they're sitting all day. And so the only way to keep in shape is to do this intense regimented shit. And it's not really the way that our bodies are designed to perform. Yeah. So I know that it's hard and I'm, I'm definitely, I don't do this or anything, but how can we incorporate walking into our life throughout the day? A walking desk. Isn't yeah. That the, <laughs> isn't that, that like the newest rage right now? Yeah. We have one at an office that I, my client has. Um, what is that? So you that walk is. on a treadmill while you're typing. Oh. I, I, I find it extremely distracting, but um, I'm sure I should just give it another try. Or you could just stop and go for a 10-minute walk and be like, I'm taking my yeah, break. That's me because I like to not think when I run or when I walk or when I exercise. And not to not think. I will think, but I don't want to think about work stuff. So that's why I didn't like the walking desk because I'm like, there's too much going on here. I'm, I'm trying to get in shape and I'm trying to answer the client's email. Like, what is going on here? <laughs> it wasn't for me. That's actually how I went through all my board exams. No I studied. Way. I studied on a treadmill and we have a treadmill in, in my house I was looking at buying a desk to put over it, and it was like $500. And my boyfriend, being an engineer, was like, I can do this. <laughs> and he jimmied me That's this awesome. like desk to put on it. It was like strapped in, and I just sat there, and I had my cards. I can't, you can't write, but it was more for memorization. Because if I was sitting trying to memorize, I would just get distracted, and I would yeah. pull my phone out, and Facebook, you know, and right. whatever. And then... I just like was walking and if I was walking and studying, I don't know why it just went into my brain more. That's really interesting. And maybe it is because you already have two things going on. So then you don't have to go to Facebook because we always need two things going on, right? We can't even binge watch a Netflix show without being on the phone at the same time. (laughs) Just not how our brains operate anymore. (laughs) I know. Well, you know, in Kundalini Yoga, We'll go back to Kundalini. Um, In my teacher's training, they talked about how women have six tracks running in their brains. Oh, shit. And men have one. Like, literally one track-minded, you know? So that's why men can more 
focus like okay i got a task to do and i'll do it women multitask we're like that's true they say that that's from evolution when men were the hunters and women were the gatherers so we had to remember not only like where the boysenberry bush was and the pear was and the we also had to be able to talk about it and be like hey girls i just found this bush over here we got to go uh, it's it's five miles down the river and then we got to go right and then we got to go left and the, and the men just don't do that they're like <laughs> antelope Sit. With a gun. <laughs> like they're very focused that's yeah. i read that somewhere it's like this from evolution of, of our tasks so not only do we have to remember many tracks but we had to be able to talk about it <laughs> <laughs> we're masters of that now we are we are so in kundalini they teach you that and then how how do you use that in the world one of the headspace series i just did mm-hmm. he talks about this is the one that i have found really 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 helpful he talks about noting and so when you're sitting there and I tell patients to do this on the table focus on your breath inhale one exhale two inhale three exhale four and keep going to count to ten and inevitably at some point maybe two maybe at three you're gonna start to think oh man the other day blah 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 whatever yeah, yeah. and then he says catch yourself and bring yourself back. Mm -hmm. And so I think women, because we're so multifaceted in our brain and multi-tracked, if we can just start to notice when we have veered off of wherever, you know, road we're on Mm -hmm. and just bring ourselves back and not judge yourself or be mean about it. Be like, oh, I just, uh, no, don't do that. Just notice it gently, calmly and be like, oh, I just thinking and come back to the counting and that way you shut your brain off a little bit more create a little more space that's why it's called headspace you know to create a little more space in your brain instead of overloading with thoughts that's kind of what i how i look at it okay so what is your final advice your tips for food heals nation to be healthy happy all that good stuff i've been putting together like stuff about a book that i want to write at some point, Mm -hmm. um, which is really how to be a smart patient. And so when you do have something that happens to you and you go to a doctor, remember that doctors, acupuncturists, naturopaths, whatever you go to, we're all in practice. We're not God. We don't have all the answers. And in the book, The Fifth Agreement, Mm -hmm. by Don Miguel Ruiz's son. He says, listen and learn, but be skeptical. And so I kind you know, you can go on the internet and you can read blueberries cure cancer and then blueberries cause cancer. Right. And so what's your truth? And so I can give advice to a patient and if it doesn't resonate with them and who they are, it's just because that's what probably worked for me or I've seen it work on other patients, but it might not work on you. And so be smart, be your own health advocate. You're your best doctor. You know what's going on with your body if you're listening. And so that's my best advice to people who are dealing with stuff and are going from doctor to doctor, taking this, taking that. Like do research. I mean, that's Google, the internet. Man, I can't tell you, Google as a practitioner is my best friend. (laughs) I go, if if I'm like confused on certain things or I've been steering a patient in one direction and, and I'm not seeing the results, I will either ask colleagues or I go on the internet and try to find other paths that people have taken. There's lots of like things out there, um, blogs and and um, people's personal like healing stories. Stories that you read. Like I have a lot of patients that are getting IUDs out. Thank God, get your IUD out. And everybody's journey with the, taking an IUD out is so different. People come in. What do I expect? Well, these are the things you could expect, but you're will find out one day at a time. So. Just do research as a patient. And I I have the feeling that not every doctor and health practitioner is going to react the way you do, because there are, I'm sure we've all met doctors here that say, this is what you're, this is what I think you should do. And that's it. Right. And they don't want to hear about, about your Google searches and your friend who had the same thing or, or what your body, or maybe that doesn't feel right for you. There are those doctors and I'm sure our listeners have come across them as well. So go get another opinion. Find a doctor that you 
feel connected to. Yeah. Um, and will listen to you, right? Yeah. I mean, I, being a healthcare practitioner myself and going to, to doctors, I do know stuff. And I will go there, and if a doctor kind of gives me the hand, I would walk out of there and be like, you're not my doctor. Because mm-hmm. I can't be my own doctor. It's, I'm too close to my own symptoms. So when I went and searched for, for a doctor for myself, I looked at her across the table, and I said, I need somebody to captain my ship. I can't do this. And she stood up, looked me in the eyes, shook my hand, and said, I'm your captain. Did she salute you? Yes. <laughs> she did. She's your captain. She did. My brother was there and oh, he was wow. like crying and she's been my doctor ever since. Yeah. And she's my, one of my biggest advocates. And, and she even will say to me, um, check this out. I, I suggest this for you, but check it out yourself. Do mm-hmm. the research. You're mm-hmm. smart. Mm-hmm. And you want to find a doctor who's mm-hmm. going to empower you. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest advice nowadays that I have. And my last thing I'll say, when I was first diagnosed a long time ago, I went to a practitioner, uh, Dondup, Lopsang mm-hmm. Dondup. He is a Tibetan healer. He meditated on my pulse for, I don't know, half hour. It was the first time anyone's ever done that to me. Mm-hmm. I paid like $80. I don't even remember. And he looked up, he said four words to me mm-hmm. that have impacted me so deeply. He said, slow down, be happy. Aww. And those, that's what I will leave with today. Slow down and be happy. That is so beautiful. And I know I need to hear that mm-hmm. every day. I remember that. And then he gave me herbs that you chew. And I was like, what's in here? And he says, you don't want to know. <laughs> and and I, I was like looking up, and I think it was bat shit. Which <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I can't, I can't. <laughs> and I had to chew it, and so it was, like, stuck in my teeth. Oh, oh my God. It's very Tibetan. <laughs> it's so Tibetan. I was going to say, those words are very Tibetan, and then, the, yeah. Oh. Okay, I have to go back to one thing before we wrap up, because I just know we're going to get emails about it. You said women need to take out their IUDs. I agree with you, but can you tell us why? In your 20s, you don't feel the symptoms, of it because you're young, you're virile, and, and you're, you know, kind of a, like just going. Juicy. You're juicy. Yeah, <laughs> very juicy. But in your 30s, it starts to catch up to you. Mm-hmm. And I have patients that have the copper IUD, and yep. now in their 30s, they have copper poisoning, mm-hmm. which really affects their gallbladder. And they're having a lot of gallbladder issues, which is, you know, creates the bile in your body and I don't know 20 years ago they used to take gallbladders out like you mm. know two for one specials oh and it's God. really they still do they still do they still do it and it's really terrible you need your gallbladder yeah and then the marina that one is you know s- releasing hormones. synthetic hormones into the, your body the, the little injection in your arm or something like that is that what no that's called? an IUD oh it's still an IUD the oh the marina. hormonal IUD okay mm-hmm. And that one, I mean, I just got a patient off of that, and she, like, I was reading all about the marina crash, and I was so, I was like, I, she was the first patient with the marina that I had taken it, had her take Wait, it out. Why would they, okay, so the IUD works because it, they implant it into your uterus, and it gives your body the impression that it's pregnant, and therefore doesn't release eggs, and therefore you don't get pregnant, but why would they also use an IUD with hormones? Well, it's, it's producing estrogen, and so you have an excess of estrogen in your body, which I don't know why. I mean, that's just... That's weird. That's okay. a Western thing of how so it's like, created. Let's just add some... With, now we've right. added hormones. So you can get cancer, you know, yeah. cervical cancer with, with the IUDs, but not in your 20s. That's the whole thing, mm-hmm. you know? People in their 20s and teens... They're doing all right. They're fine, but their when Their body's you, detoxing it mm-hmm. enough. When you hit 30, your body doesn't do it, won't, you know, detox the hormones out, Mm -hmm. which is one thing that I had to do for this patient. We had to put her on these um, supplements that really detox the excess free radical hormones that Mm -hmm. are just all, because she was having like, just driving in the car out of nowhere, just crying. And so she had it taken out and, you know, she, because acupuncture and like herbs and supplements, we were really able to like minimize her effects of it and now she's fine she did go through like two weeks of headaches but 
a month later because I have her on um, so great called Marjoram Compound. It's great uh, period regulator for mm-hmm. those women out there with period issues. It's a homeopathic thing. Um, helps minimize cramping and stuff like that. It is amazing to me how Western medicine is always just like, how old are you? Here's your birth control or here's your I- IUD or inject five-year injection into your arm without even really talking about the fact that they're causing cancer or having other, like copper in your body. Maybe that's not a good idea. Or Maybe. Like, it's just, it, it floors me. It really does. Birth control completely changed my body at a young age. And I didn't make the connection at the time. Um, but looking back, it was an exact correlation of when I started birth control and my weight ballooned and my face was bloated and uncomfortable. I was starting to have depression, which I had never had before. I had never had depression before. This is before my trauma of losing my parents and I had a great childhood. And all of a sudden I was like this depressed fat teen, you know, and I'm talking about 19 years old, 20 years old. And it was because of the birth control. Yeah. Uh, and I never, I never went back to that. I had a great body. I'm just saying. Never yeah. came back. I just, I, I, it, it astounds me that they don't talk about other methods that they want to get women on some sort of hormonal or very invasive, weird type of way of controlling our fertility. I mean, there's lots of other methods that don't do that. I'm all for birth control, but not just, not those. Yeah. I have a friend who is about to have her second kid. And she's like, I'm thinking of going back on birth control. And I was like, why? And she's like, well, we have two kids, you know, we don't want any more. And I said, look, you have put your body through enough. Mm -hmm. It is now time for the man to own up to his part (laughs) in this process. And if you don't want to have kids, he can have a vasectomy. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to continue to put your body through all this hormones and changing and birth and, you know, a lot. Like, you know, women don't have to take the responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of younger women feel like they have to go on birth control because... um, That's what we're told. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that and, like, because, you know, guys don't want to wear condoms or Mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, if he doesn't want to wear a condom, he's not your man. Yeah, Mm -hmm. don't sleep with him. Done. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. How can we have a consultation with you, follow you, email you, all that good stuff? You can go on to my website, www.schumannwellness.com, S-H-U-M-A-N, wellness.com. I'm in Santa Monica. I take insurance. Woo! (laughs) Whoa! PPO, unfortunately, HMO doesn't cover acupuncture i also my phone number out there 323-515-2212 go get your acupuncture on yeah come see me she knows her stuff i have a really great um amethyst biomat she does i've been on it (laughs) she does awesome all right well thank you so much for thank you for having me this has been fun Thanks for listening, Food Heals Nation. Join our mailing list to get 20% off upcoming classes by going to foodhealsvip.com. Yep, that's right. We're going to teach you about wellness, entrepreneurship, and spirituality. So join the email list to stay in the loop. Stay in the loop. Our first class will be Podcast Greenlight, where we will teach you how to market and monetize your health wellness, or spirituality podcast. And you'll also find out how to join our club where you can get premium podcasts from us, Allison and Susie, with never-before-heard interviews on the Food Heals podcast. Yes, and make sure to join our Food Heals Nation Facebook group at foodhealsgroup.com where you can connect with us, meet other Food Heals Nation listeners, ask questions, add value, and of course, promote your health and wellness brand. We can't wait to meet you. You can find all of our social media channels, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Food Heals Nation. And follow my personal adventures on Instagram at Allison Melody TV. And for all the show notes from today's show, go to foodhealsnation.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately. (laughs) 